All right, so we'll get started. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the OLS North webinar, fundraising ideas and more. Um, so, I just uh, welcome our speakers. We have uh, Helen McDonald from Calendar Public Library and Jonathan Lewis from Atticokan Public Library. Um, for the time being, if you have any questions, you'll see on the right hand side of your screen a little bubble. Uh, you can type in your questions there. Um, and also at the end of each section, um, Helen's going to speak for 20 minutes and Jonathan will speak for 20 minutes. And at the end of their sections, we'll answer some more questions. And we'll also save some time at the end of the presentation uh, for anyone else's questions. Um, so with that being said, I pass it over to Helen. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to get started on this very cold Northern Ontario morning. Um, I don't seem to be doing anything when I click. <laughs> um, I can't seem to get on to my next slide. Sorry, Helen, it should be. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Why are we fundraising? Are you fundraising for a new library? Or do you want to purchase a new photocopier? Your fundraising goals will affect what fundraising activities that you choose. Uh, do we want partners? Partners bring more opportunities, ideas, and people to the fundraising events. The events that I will be describing for the result of many partners working together for the good of the community. Uh, partners can give events clout, uh, especially when we partner with larger organizations, businesses, and community leaders. Partners who help raise funds with your library buy into the importance and the viability of your library. Where can we find fundraising ideas? Fundraising ideas are everywhere. Here are a few websites and places that you may find the perfect plan for your next event. What does a su successful fundraiser look like? Um, I've uh, printed out a checklist here um, that you could use at the end of a fundraiser. Um, this is the one that I use. If the answer to one of the questions um, on this list is uh, no, then we investigate further and make some changes in that area of the event. If the answer is no to many of these questions, then we may decide that the fundraiser that we're doing is not worth the time um, and effort that we put into it. The three fundraising activities that I'm going to talk about today is the Kids Activity Day, the Christmas House Tour, and the Mayor's Ball. Our Kids Activity Day, um, this was the first time we have ever done this. Uh, last year in February. Um, it was very, very successful, and that's why I'll talk a little bit more in depth about this activity. Uh, Kids Activity Day was a fun day uh, that involved culture, uh, literacy, and so socialization for the children uh, with lots of fun events. We had five hours of ongoing activities. It ran from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, the children had to be accompanied by a parent or a caregiver to attend. Um, so everyone was stamped at the front door. Um, they could come and go as they wanted. If they wanted to go home for lunch, they could. Um, if they wanted to go home and feed the dog, they could do that and come back again. Uh, the admission was $2 for children and $4 for adults. And the reason that we charged was that we were actually uh, raising funds for a new library. It was held at our local community center. Uh, the children could move from one activity to another at their leisure. If they wanted to stay at one activity all day, they could do that. Um, we just let them come and go as they wanted. Uh, some of the activities that we had at uh, the Kids Activity Day, we had Frontier College there with literacy games and puppet making. Um, they had uh, two ta separate tables set up. One was uh, for the literacy games and the other one the children were all uh, working on puppets and parents could help them with any of these activities. We had two musical guests who were both excellent. Uh, one of them uh, was so um, 
inviting to the children that he had them dancing on the stage and uh, singing, and it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, we had one guest in the morning, one guest in the afternoon. Now, this year when we um, have this event, we will be having um, four, guests, four musical guests because we found the music was uh, really um, well attended. And we had the Shriner Clowns there. Uh, the Shriner Clowns were there for an hour and a half, and again, this year, uh, we've decided we need the Shriner uh, Clowns twice. Uh, we'll have them coming in the morning and in the afternoon. We had uh, three face painters, and that was the only place in the building where we had a long lineup. So this year, we're going to have four face painters. We had a tea party center um, where the children could dress up in dress-up clothes. Uh, we had two boxes of dress-up clothes. Uh, they sat down, they were served iced tea or juice and uh, cookies. Um, they really enjoyed this activity. We also had someone dressed up as a princess who um, was walking around at that activity uh, talking to the children. Uh, the fire department was involved in our, um, our kids' activity day. They brought a firehouse that um, had windows in it, and the kids had to throw bean bags at the fire in the windows and try to knock it down. Uh, they brought Sparky with them. They also brought a pumper truck, uh, parked it outside the community center with pylons around it, and the children could go out and go through the fire truck and um, see how everything worked. Uh, we had two Lego tables, and uh, the Lego tables, uh, we had one uh, with a Duplos, so that the children could actually, the younger children could actually play at that table. And then we had the uh, smaller Legos for the older children at another table. We had an ice fishing pond, um, and we chose ice fishing because of the time of the year. And the children paid 25 cents and they could uh, fish for a prize. We ran out of prizes for that very early and had to run and get more. Um, we had um, critters and kids. Uh, which is um, uh, it's an actual company, and they bring uh, different types of animals. They have uh, boa constrictors, they have turtles, um, spiders, um, chinchillas, all different kinds of animals that uh, they bring to the event, and they were there for uh, two hours. Um, this year we're adding a few more events. Um, we're going to be adding uh, pottery for the children. Uh, they're each going to have a little clump of clay, and they're going to have um, actual potters there to show them what they can do with it. Uh, we're going to have uh, screen-printed book bags, and the children will be able to use fabric markers and color the book bags. Um, we're also going to have Home Depot little building kits, and the children will be able to put these kits together. Um, we don't have as many of those, and we will run out, uh, so that table will have to have another activity that takes over once the uh, Home Depot kits are gone. Uh, this is me doing face painting last year. I was one of the face painters. Uh, this year I will not be doing that just because I was needed in so many different places that um, um, I couldn't fill in very well. So I'm having someone take my place as, as a face painter. We had um, lots of uh, door prizes. Um, books were given out to the first 75 children that uh, came to the event. Um, these books were donated by Frontier College. Um, our local uh, La Piazza uh, brought uh, pizza and water and sold it for a dollar each, which was very reasonable for all the families. We had a spinning demonstration. Uh, the children could actually sit at the spinning wheel and uh, spin. Uh, we had guests the Easter eggs. Uh, the museum came with a display. And we had different vendors. Uh, attend. Most of them uh, sold um, jewelry or uh, children's clothing. And we did have a raffle there as well. Um, who were our partners? Uh, we partnered with the municipality. Uh, they gave us the community center uh, free of charge. Um, we partnered with local businesses. Um, they gave us monetary uh, donations for uh, to pay for the critters and kids, for the Shriner clowns for the uh, prizes for the um, fish pond. Uh, they also donated some goods for the uh, door prizes. Uh, the museum attended and had a display set up. Um, we borrowed uh, furniture from uh, the local schools because we wanted to have kid-sized furniture for all of the events. Uh, Nipissing University lent us um, 
probably about 10 or 15 easels so that uh, people could um, advertise their event um, and the children could see very clearly what the event was and where it was. Uh, we partnered with the fire department, uh, the friends of the library who uh, gave, in, gave us the money for the event. Uh, they paid for all of the face paint. Uh, we had donations from individual library members. Um, local artists attended. All of our face painters were local artists. And uh, we had um, musicians attend. Uh, we marketed this activity a lot through social media. Uh, we used uh, Facebook and Twitter. And I found Twitter is very effective for um, letting the media know what's going on. We used our local newspaper, our community magazine, radio, TV. We put it everywhere. Um, and we also created a postcard size uh, poster that we handed out to every child in our three uh, feeder schools and we also dropped some off at the daycares and earlier centers. Um, we put up posters in doctor's office, dentist office, uh, local businesses, other public libraries and we gave out the little uh, um, postcards as well at the front desk for two weeks before the event. Uh, one of those went in every book that went out at the front desk. Uh, what would I change about this event? Uh, the number of activities, oh, what wouldn't I change rather, I'm sorry. Uh, the number of activities was great. Um, I think though uh, we would um, have more activities for older children. Uh, that was the only thing that we thought was lacking a little bit. Uh, the number of meetings I wouldn't change. We had probably 12 to 15 meetings and we definitely needed all of those meetings. Um, I wouldn't change the marketing because we had a turnout of 500 people, so obviously the marketing uh, reached um, our target audience. Um, serving lunch we thought was a great idea because many of the people stayed uh, because we had lunch there and they didn't have to go home. Uh, the decorations were perfect. Uh, we had a whole winter theme and it looked absolutely amazing. Uh, the types of activities we thought were very successful. Uh, the time of the year for the event we thought was very successful as well because it was winter, it was very cold outside, and there wasn't a lot for uh, the children to do. Uh, we did have skating available that day because there is skating right beside the community center. So we did have some um, uh, people going to skate as well. Uh, what I would change would uh, we'd be selling drinks all day because the kids were very thirsty. Uh, this year we have about 250 drinks to sell at our event, uh, February 22nd. Uh, we had too many door prizes. The draws went on too long, so we're going to limit door prizes. Uh, we needed more volunteers. Um, we absolutely need at least 25. Um, it would be better if we had 30. Um, this year we're not going to have any vendors because the vendors uh, were not very successful. Uh, they didn't sell too many of their wares, so uh, instead we're having additional activities for the older children. We'd have a different setup at the door as well because we did have people lined up outside and uh, it was a very cold day and we don't want to see that happen again where people are waiting outside in the cold. Uh, now I'm going to talk about our Christmas house tour, which we did uh, December 7th this year, and they have done this in previous years as well at, at the Calendar Public Library. And how does it work? Um, we have people visit five destinations uh, completely decorated for Christmas. Uh, the sixth destination is a tea at St. Alphonsus Church, and we have a raffle draw there as well. The ticket is a brochure, and um, the brochure has a picture of all of the destinations on it and a little box beside each picture um, so that when uh, people show up at their destination, um, the hostess will check off their little box so that they've actually gone to that de destination. Um, they can start at any destination they like. They can even start at the tea room first if they want to. And we did this because um, other years, previous years, um, they had people go to the tea room at the end and they were bombarded with people. So this way, we have a steady flow of people coming into the tea room. 
at least two volunteers were at each house, um, 12 were at the tea room to serve and uh, make tea, etc. cetera. Um, people leave their boots and bags at the front door of the houses, and um, they take their bag with them to the next house so that they can put their boots in there again. Uh, we don't allow food or drinks in the houses, and no children under 12 years of age were allowed to come. Why is uh, this event successful? Um, I think people want to see these beautifully decorated, um, usually very unique, uh, larger homes in our community. Um, some of the homes have very special features. Uh, one of the homes that we had this year uh, was a, a green build, and the person who owned it was an architect, and they, um, they built everything green. I mean, the countertops, Everything in that house was a green build. They also had a, a, a rooftop garden, uh, which you couldn't see in the winter, but you could see um, how she had it set up. So that was quite a unique um, thing to see. Uh, the tea is a very social event. Um, the goodies are amazing. They're all homemade uh, goodies. Um, and it creates a Christmas cheer in the community as well. Um, we had this year... Uh, five people from the North Bay Symphony uh, playing in the background, playing Christmas music, and it just added uh, a wonderful ambiance to the, the whole setting. Um, the library becomes a fun and interactive place this way, and it brings the library out into the community. Uh, problems that can arise with a Christmas house tour that we have experienced in previous years. Uh, the weather can create a problem um, if it's stormy or icy. Um, we have had people uh, fall. We've had them get their car stuck in people's snowbanks, that kind of thing. Um, people um, have to be watched at all times in the homes, and not so much that they might steal something. I don't think we worry about that quite as much, as they touch uh, things um, that are breakable and um, that the homeowner wouldn't appreciate them touching. So we just have to remind them sometimes that this is someone's home and that you can't, you know, put your hands on everything in there. You're basically walking around to just view it. Um, we've had occasions where people have uh, difficulty finding the homes um, because some of the locations have been rural um, on the lake and just a little bit more difficult to find. We do provide uh, a map in the uh, brochure um, and it does, you know, show you how to get there. But there are, you know, some occasions where people just can't seem to find their way. Uh, we've had occasions where people have lost their ticket uh, in between houses, or they show up the tea, show up at the tea without a ticket, and we use the honor system and believe that they had a ticket and let them in. Um, we have difficulty sometimes finding homes, which we did this year. Uh, some people don't want to open their home to a stranger. Or um, sometimes uh, people want to um, uh, have their home on the tour, but their home isn't really, really suitable for the tour. So um, that can be a little bit of an issue sometimes as well. And sometimes people bring their children, even though they've been advised not to do that. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about our Mayor's Ball. Um, our Mayor's Ball is a, a gala event. Um, it was occurring every year. Now it's occurring, I think, every second year. Um, it's a gala event with a catered uh, formal dinner. Uh, last year, uh, not last year, sorry, two years ago, we had uh, Cecil uh, in North Bay cater the dinner. It was excellent. Uh, there's live music, which is kind of a quiet uh, background music. Uh, there's a si silent auction at the event. Um, all very high-priced items, um, items that you know, can run anywhere from 200 to $1,000. They're, they're very um, high-priced items. Uh, the tickets are $75 to get in. Um, people are given a $50 um, tax receipt for their purchasing their ticket. There's a cash bar. Um, we don't run the cash bar. Uh, we leave that to some community organization. The last time, I think it was the um, Lions Club that ran the bar, and they got the proceeds from that. Um, one of the nice things about it is that sometimes we can sell an entire table to a business and they buy uh, the table um, and give it to their employees as a Christmas gift. 
so um, we, it's very easy to sell the tickets that way. Um, we always invite uh, dignitaries, MP, MPP, the mayor and council members attend, and we've had mayors come from other communities as well. It's very elegantly decorated. Um, we've been fortunate that there's a person in our community who's um, a designer and is very willing to help us with the decorations. Um, why is this event successful? Um, I think it's the quality of the food, um, the music, the decorating. Um, there's lots of great prizes and um, auction items. Um, it's a nice night out in the winter months. It's usually held in February or March. Uh, so once again, um, it's at a time when people don't have, you know, much to do and it's cold outside, so they're looking forward to this type of an event. Um, it's beautifully decorated right down to every last detail. There's um, beautiful centerpieces. The place settings are beautifully done. Um, there's, you know, beautiful snowflakes hanging from the ceilings. It's just absolutely uh, stunning. Um, it's well organized because of the multiple meetings and job assignments. Um, it runs very smoothly because everyone knows what their task is. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, the cleanup goes very quickly, uh, extremely well organized. And we're very lucky that we have a person to take the lead on most of our events. And she uh, she actually ran a an airport at one time, and she's a very, very organized person. And uh, she keeps us all in line and, and gives us a list of our, of our tasks and our duties. <laughs> uh, so everyone does their part. Uh, problems that may arise at the mayor's ball. Um, tickets um, are sold sometimes and people don't show up. So we have, um, you know, some empty seats that could have been sold uh, to other people. Um, often the business tables um, are the ones where there's vacancies there. Some of the staff doesn't show up. Uh, again, bad weather can affect um, how successful the event is because we live in the north and uh, sometimes, you know, if it's a if sleet outside or, or um, a snowstorm, people just don't want to come out in that weather. Um, we have difficulty sometimes um, asking for auction items because uh, the same people are often targeted each year, you know, the artists for their, their paintings and their pottery, et cetera. And uh, sometimes, um, you know, they don't want to give every year. Uh, coordination of speakers, food, and music um, is always uh, a task because sometimes the speakers go longer than they should. Uh, sometimes the food doesn't arrive on time. So uh, that type of thing, you have to be ready um, to uh, step in when it's, it, you know, that happens. Um, I'm going to talk just a, very briefly about burnout because I'm very conscious of this with uh, volunteers. Um, to alleviate burnout, um, we try not to do the same activities every year. We alternate activities, maybe have a big one one year, uh, a lesser one the next year. Right now we're doing a lot of activities because we're trying to raise money for a new library, so I'm just hoping we don't burn out our, our volunteers. Uh, have enough volunteers. Make sure that for your event um, nobody feels like they can't go to the washroom or they can't get something to eat. Um, you want to have enough volunteers to um, sit in when somebody else needs to take a break. Um, be organized so everyone knows their tasks. Uh, lots of meetings is the answer to that, as far as I'm concerned, um, so that everyone understands what they're supposed to do. And being grateful. Uh, it's very important to be grateful to your volunteers, to let them know. It doesn't matter if you have to tell them a hundred times. We appreciate everything you do for us. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you taking this on. You know, it's, it's, there, there just has to be every occasion you can to be grateful uh, to them. And we celebrate our successes. Our Kids Activity Day last year was such a big success. I got a cake, invited all of the volunteers, and we had like a little party in the library just to celebrate our success. Um, so I'm going to uh, leave it to Jonathan now.
Thanks, Helen, for that. Uh, we'll now pass it over to Jonathan to speak about his section of the webinar. Just for a little clarification, Jonathan, um, if you're still there, you... Yep. Oh, are can you, you back? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, yeah. good. Yes. Excellent. Sorry, my line wasn't... Unmuted. There you go. So uh, we'll pass it over to Jonathan. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk about fundraising and lottery licenses. Um, if you have a Friends of the Library group or if you're uh, in partnership with another charitable organization um, that wants to get a lottery license, um, it's a good way to raise money, uh, especially through raffles. Um, so first of all, we have to talk about who's eligible to get a lottery license. And, of course, a public library would not be eligible because the libraries are just are a municipal um, in structure. Um, but a nonprofit charity group like your Friends of the Library could be eligible. Uh, in our case, at first, um, our town CAO thought our Friends of the Library were not eligible, but later we had to convince them that they were. Um, so getting a lottery license... Um, you have to apply for one from the Provincial Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, and they have a website. Uh, it is the municipality that will decide uh, to issue a license to a local charitable or religious organization uh, for ticket raffle lotteries, uh, where the total value of the prizes to be awarded does not exceed $50,000. So any uh, non any nonprofit organization within your uh, community that wants to get a lottery license uh, would have to um, apply to would have to have the municipality approve uh, that application, uh, and then so that person would be probably your town CAO or other person uh, who would have to uh, write a letter of uh, approval that would be part of your application to the province. Uh, so the courts uh, have determined that the charitable um, uh, in, for organizations uh, refers to things like the relief of poverty, the advancement of education, the advancement of religion, uh, and other charitable purposes um, beneficial to the community. So that could be a wide variety of things, charitable purposes. Uh, in our case, what we wanted was um, to raise money for events that were outside of our regular library budget, things that the library wouldn't ordinarily do, but we could do if we had, if uh, there was donated money that could, could uh, go toward those kind of events. Uh, these would be things like we had a magic show, for instance, we had Science North come to visit us uh, for an outdoor science fair that they do. Uh, events like that are things that we don't have as part of our normal budget, but uh, if um, for that reason they could be considered charitable purposes that the Friends of the Library could fund. Uh, so our problem was that our town CAO uh, thought that our friends of the library were not eligible uh, for a lottery license. And the reason that he thought that was because he considered the friends to be just part of the library, as if they were really just um, an extension of, of the municipality. Um, so we had to prove to him that the friends were a separate entity from the library, that they were their own charitable group. Uh, so in order to do that, what we had to we had to make the case that the friends of the library are well they're not employees of the library. Of course, they don't work for us. Um, they don't answer to the library. But they, we don't we don't they have their own structure of, of uh, authority and meetings and everything else. They have their own bank account. So financially, they're separate from us. Uh, they are a nonprofit organization in the official sense. Um, they they donate to the library. Uh, we said in much the same way that other people would donate. Uh, when they're giving to the library for some kind of cause. Um, and the Friends will support activities and events, we said, that are different from the usual library services that we normally have the budget to do. And once we did all that, uh, then we were able to convince the CAO, thankfully, that uh, the Friends were a, a charitable organization, not profit, that was uh, separate from the library and could be eligible for a license. So to get a license, um, what you have to do is there's there's PDF applications right on their website. You have to pay a fifty dollar fee. Uh, you send in the approval letter that your municipality has given you uh, thirty days before the event, or forty five days before the event if you're a first time organization. 
Uh, the organization has to have been in existence for one year for being considered eligible. Um, you have to have a location in Ontario. You have to demonstrate that you uh, provide charitable services in Ontario. Um, you may need to um, pr prove your eligibility by doing things like in including your uh, incorporation papers, uh, the constitution of your group, um, uh, the financial statement from the previous year. So once you do all that, you send that in, you pay the fee, um, then you'll have, they'll send you the license, and once you have it, then you need to state the type of lottery scheme. Uh, you have to fill in a form that says when the lottery is going to happen, uh, what the value of the prizes will be, uh, how many tickets are being printed, and what the ticket price is. So you also have to state the charitable purpose. Uh, and in this case, it was specifically for certain children's programs that were outside of our usual um, budget. Then um, you just have to be aware of the rules of what uh, kinds of activities are considered lotteries. Um, legally, they consider them to be under the categories of bingo, break open tickets, raffles, and social gaming. And raffles is the one that most likely uh, your group will want, want to do because there's probably other groups in town that do the other kinds of things like bingo. Um, so uh, an activity requires a lottery license if there's two things um, present. And both of these have to be there. It has to involve an element of chance. So something has to be determined randomly. Uh, and then it also has to have people paying money to enter. And only if both of those things are present is it the sort of thing that you would need a lottery license for. There are quite a few activities that you don't need a lottery license for, even though they're kind of similar to lotteries. And we'll talk about those in just a little while. Uh, so your lottery license, uh, when you have it, it has to be for a specific lottery event at a specific time. Uh, the license itself has to be displayed in a prominent location somewhere where the public could see it. Uh, it has to have its number mentioned in the promotional materials when you're advertising for it, and that you have to put the lottery license number in there. Uh, some other requirements that you should be aware of. Um, one is you can't sell... Uh, raffle tickets through the internet. You're not allowed to sell the tickets that way, even though you could advertise the raffle. Um, the prizes have to be new. Uh, they can't be used items. So sometimes if you're doing something like uh, a basket draw, where you have some items that you're giving away, uh, a whole basket filled with items, um, people might want to donate items to that basket, but you have to make sure that whatever they're donating is something that was either newly purchased or something that they made. Uh, it couldn't be some old item that they donated. Uh, the prizes over $500 also have to have uh, an invoice or official price quote with them. Uh, some other rules that you may not be aware of. You cannot give away livestock as a prize in a raffle, just so you know. Uh, so some of the raffles that we've had in the past, the Friends of the Library group has done, the half and half draw is one of the simplest ones because uh, in that case, the prize is really just half of the money that you raise from the tickets. And that's an easy one to do because you don't have to worry about a prize so much. Then uh, you have a good idea of how much, how many tickets you're going to sell, you know, and you can advertise what the price is, what the prize is going to be because you know it'll be half that amount. Uh, basket draws are ones we've done for a few years and they're pretty popular. A basket draw is just a basket that has um, items that are usually um, geared toward a particular theme. So there was uh, a back-to-school basket that the friends raffled. It had um, items that would be, um, you know, kids would use, would be of interest to kids who were going back to school. Um, we've had holiday-themed ones, of course. You can do things around Easter and spring and Christmas and that sort of thing. Uh, there's big prize draws, of course. Uh, we had a, a bird feeder that someone made specifically for us. That was raffled. Uh, we had a 50-inch TV that was donated uh, to us, and that was a, a nice prize because you certainly can get quite a lot of uh, publicity from that sort of thing. So just to mention a few activities that you can do uh, that do not require a lottery license. Um, it's good to know these because there are other kinds of um, activities or fundraising related activities that seem kind of like a lottery but they're actually not considered lotteries so you wouldn't need a license for them. In that case your library could probably do these things. Uh, auctions is one. 
uh, because the winner in an auction is determined not uh, by chance. It's not a random thing, but it is the highest bidder. Even though you're paying money into an auction, the winner is not determined randomly uh, because the two things that have to be present for a lottery license, uh, for an activity that requires a lottery license, is that it has to uh, be random and it has to be uh, money being paid into it. So door prizes um, don't need a, li a license because uh, people are not paying for the ticket, but they do win by chance. So it's a chance draw thing because you're drawing people's names or something for a door, door prize. But because you don't have to pay for it, there's no money involved, then it's not a lottery. Door prizes wouldn't be fundraisers on their own, but they could be things that accompany uh, a fundraising event. Uh, contests of skill. This is an important one to know because um, there are contests where people can pay a fee to enter, uh, but the winner is not determined by chance. An example of that would be something like if you had a poetry contest, a poetry writing contest, and the winner was uh, determined by, say, a panel of judges who decided which was the best. Those kind of things um, aren't lotteries because they, the winner is not random, even though you have to pay to enter. Um, there could be other kinds of contests that are skill, but you probably wouldn't want to do ones that are uh, games of chance because those are involve a random. Um, there are kinds of fundraisers where donations are made toward a special kind of event, special thing will happen if you raise a certain amount of money. For instance, sometimes people will uh, have a, a fundraising goal where if they reach a certain number, if they reach $500 or something, then the staff will shave their heads or they'll kiss a horse or they'll do something special or bizarre like that. Um, or it's also would include things like where you're pledging uh, to people if they're going to they want to raise a certain amount of money because they're going to do a, a run or a walk or something like that. So those kind of things uh, you're giving money into, but again, it's not randomly determined. So you can you can do those things without a lottery license, and it's good to remember that when you're doing um, your own fundraising. So um, the Alcohol Gaming Commission of Ontario has a website, which is um, atco.on.ca. And that has um, all the information you probably need, uh, the legal information to know about the rules uh, for lottery licensing. Um, so I recommend you just check with them if you have any questions specifically about what's allowed to do and isn't. You can also contact me, uh, Jonathan Lewis, at my email. And that concludes my presentation. And now I guess we'll ask if there's any other questions. Thank you a lot, Jonathan. Um, now I'm opening it up for some questions. Um, so there's two ways you can ask a question to either Jonathan or Helen. Uh, you can type in the bubble um, bubble text on the right-hand side of your screen, or you can push star six uh, to unmute your telephone line and ask them your question. So I will make the assumption um, that we have no questions. Um, so a big thank you to uh, Jonathan and Helen for this presentation. I know I learned quite a bit. Um, and uh, I wish you all a great day. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye.